Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Motown Media, and today we've got a brand new review of Porter Robinson's Smile album. Yes, indeed, the icon of the EDM space, and arguably the second most popular artist in the scene, I would say to Skrillex, uh, Porter Robinson is back with his third studio album. And just like every other project under his belt, this newest record sees Porter taking on a brand new genre and tone. He had his debut EP, Spitfire, that was on Ozla, with a hard-hitting kind of complextro and dubstep sound that very much was a product of the time of the EDM space back then. Then his debut album Worlds came out and was released with critical success and has since become a sort of all-time classic EDM record with kind of bright electropop production. Porter then took a slight detour in 2017 with a new alias Virtual Self with a self-released EP under that same name of uh, this kind of hard-hitting trance EP that uh, kind of slapped. Only to see him return to album format with 2021's Nurture, which is a picture-esque kind of synth-pop record that tackles his struggles with writing a second album uh, with considering how successful Worlds ended up being. Which brings us here to today, the release of Smile, in which we find Porter in this kind of indie tronica phase uh, with additional inspiration from genres like hyperpop, rock, and even some bit pop here and there. All of which that is kind of wrapped in the storytelling that is by far his most intimate. There is one individual word or kind of phrase that I thought encapsulated this new era of Porter. I would say that it is his most mature record to date. Up to this point in his career, Porter has kind of sort of gotten by on these kind of flashy synth runs, earworm melodies, and processed vocals. Like, it is crazy to me the amount of people that don't know that Worlds has this very expansive narrative that follows the kind of end of a World War III and the kind of last human on Earth coming to terms with the end of it all while talking to the sentient AI. It just goes to show that in a vacuum, Porter Robinson's production has been the kind of primary and dominant forces for audiences to pay attention to. That's not to say that Porter isn't saying something in all of his songs, which he really much is, but the, for the most part, the production has been the forefront of the mind. And I don't think it really was until Nurture, where the majority of the fan base recognized that Porter hasn't just been creating infectious kind of electronic production, he's actually saying something meaningful alongside of it. Which once again brings us to Smile, Porter's album that is the most mature in thought and production, leaning most heavily into narratives with his sound design. But if you still want that classic kind of flashy electronic feel, you've still got tracks like cheerleader, Russian roulette, is there really no happiness? And if you want that emotional gut punch of Porter's kind of love ballads, you've got songs like Year of the Cup, Easier to Love You, and Everything to Me. You know, for the most part, Porter's kind of dancing that line in between those two styles, adding, uh, for sure, a much more kind of raw instrumentation to this whole record. Typically, Porter has sort of taken a simple instrumentation or sound and kind of thrown a blanket of synths over top of it um, to make it a kind of whole new sonic element. But with this record, the two are very much separated. The simple drum patterns and guitar chords are more prominent than ever, often taking a a forefront to these tracks. But it's in those moments that he's intentionally adding back in those processed electronic elements as he kind of keeps very two streamlined tracks of the more acoustic instrumentation and electronic elements, very separated more so than it's ever been. It makes for a holistic record that is the least electronic of any Porter to date. And at the same time, I think this is his most authentic one yet. There's just this infectious nature to this whole record that you can tell this is exactly what Porter Robinson wanted to make. Porter has really poured everything out onto this record, diving deeper and deeper into the inner struggles of being a musician an icon, a symbol of hope, and just a human being. While Nurture may have been a snapshot into a certain moment of Porter's life, Smile tackles the long-term feelings and thoughts of his career and life, moreover his relationships with his fans in person and online. Cheerleader was the lead single from this record and my personal favorite of the track list, and it really highlighted that artist-fan relationship. Alongside the bright synth melodies and energetic production is an introspective look at parasocial relationships. A fan who's so obsessed with him that they would rather burn alive than not be with him. But Porter takes a narrative 180 here, expressing how he feels about his relationship with his fans and how they not only need him, but he needs them as well. It's a brilliant twist on the kind of crazed fan motif as Porter makes that final declaration of thought she needed me, but I need her. And as that final melody rings out, the chorus takes on a whole new meaning. This is actually a very common trend across this record, whereas Porter prefaces this kind of one half of a relationship only to flip it 180 and show a different perspective in the final moments. And accompanying that tonal shift is a song structure that Porter comes back do time and time again. We're often getting a sort of intro, verse one, chorus one, verse two, chorus two, all from one perspective, just to kind of flip it for the bridge and final chorus. But more than anything, I think it's that lead track, Knock Yourself Out, that best holistically represents this album. When the single came out, I was a little hesitant, but after hearing the entire project, I think this song has easily become a standout track. I do think it truly encompasses this new sound and new era of Porter. It's poppy with a hint of electronic, a splash of indie, an earworm of a melody, and lyrical content where Porter is essentially saying, I don't give a damn what you think about me. 
knock yourself out. It's a formula that Porter stays pretty true to for a majority of this record. So much so that he took that formula and expanded upon it and stretched it out for Russian Roulette. In fact, the whole first run here of Knock Yourself Out, Cheerleader, and Russian Roulette are just another trio of incredible leading tracks on the Porter Robinson album. Porter has always put really special emphasis on the first three tracks of a record, and that is very, very evident on this track list as well. But yes, Russian Roulette is another brilliant exploration of indie pop sound design and expressive songwriting. Tackling the idea of overworking himself to the point where it's all consuming, Porter uses the metaphor of playing Russian roulette to express the way he feels about committing to everything that he does and being a star and seeing the fact that other people have also played the game and rolled the bullet. It's one of three, I would say, real tear jerkers on this album, and I know this one is hit for a lot of people. Just the simple fact that Porter takes the time on the third verse to simply name things in his life that he couldn't do if he was dead was a real moment of clarity for a lot of listeners. And then closing it out with that repetitive line of, I want to live, I don't want to die, is both a mantra for life and a call for help. But after Russian Roulette, we hop into what I believe to be the second of three acts of this record. You've got Perfect Pinterest Garden, Year of the Cup, and Continue Mason Freestyle as this kind of middle, almost interlude section of the album. I used to really enjoy each of these tracks here, but it is a definitive lull in the track list. Both Perfect Pinterest Garden and Continue Mason Freestyle embrace the indie aesthetic to a T, but they kind of just tend to be more straightforward tracks while comparatively looking at what surrounds it. And then Year of the Cup in the middle of those two is without a doubt my least favorite track. If anything though, I see this track as more of an interlude. Sampling a Lil Wayne interview where he talks about the the sacredness of what's in the cup that he's drinking all the time, it sort of represents both the things that consume us and the things that make us who we are. The reason I feel like this is more of an interlude is that the song is way more about the storytelling and narrative themes than it is about the production. Practically, the song is a beautiful midpoint kind of refrain in the track list, but not one that I feel like really revisiting a ton. I think it's primarily due to the Lil Wayne sampling being just a bit too long in some sections. There are some points where I do think that metaphor that Lil Wayne is trying to say is a little muddy at some points throughout the song, and I do think overall it could have been a little bit less time of that metaphor particularly. But that takes us into the third and final act of the album with the four closing tracks of Easier to Love You, Mona Lisa, Is There Really No Happiness, and Everything to Me. Honestly, this might just be the greatest four track run in Porter's discography. Each of these tracks nail home why this album exists and what stories it's trying to tell, and it's what legitimately separates this album smile from the others. Rather than these explosive, action-packed final tracks, Porter really slows things down. Easier to Love You and Everything to Me are practically ballads, while Mona Lisa and Is There Really No Happiness have bigger climactic moments that supplement the somber ballad. Easier to Love You might actually be my real favorite track of this album, which is crazy to say out loud because I've always been the kind of high energy synth melody Porter fan above all else, but this track is so good. This track is to a T why I would say that this is his most mature album to date. Prefacing as a basic love song at first with simple guitar chords and a lovey-dovey verse one, Porter shatters those thoughts in an instant with just one line. What Porter is doing here is taking the kind of classic line of, if you could only see yourself like the way I see you, and completely flip it on its head. Rather than that line being spoken to a significant other who needs a confidence boost, Porter is actually singing this to himself. The young 17-year-old version of Porter Robinson is the one singing this song to his current day self, his 32-year-old self. Essentially what's happening here is that Porter Robinson of today doesn't really see himself in the best light. He looks like someone he doesn't recognize. And it's his past self trying to tell him if you could only see yourself like me. When he was 17, he thought older Porter Robinson was going to be the healthiest, best version of himself. And he still has time to do that. He's trying to remind himself that he can be hopefully expectant of the man he's become and will continue to be. 17 year old Porter couldn't even dream of what 32 year old Porter has become. Yet in the world of today, he feels like a failure. It's vivid storytelling that is also paired with subtle production elements that really help get this point across. When he first sings to himself, dear future me, he starts layering a pitched up vocal harmony that is to sort of indicate the younger self singing in tandem with his modern today self. It's a really special track that honestly takes a lot more intentionality by the listener to really grasp onto what Porter is trying to communicate here. Then bringing on Frost Children for the one and only feature of the record on the track Mona Lisa, which is another personal favorite of mine. I particularly love the explicitly indie production with smashing guitar riffs and then heavily distorting that same guitar on the drops. Narratively, Porter is once again metaphorically playing around that artist fan relationship. This time the focus is on the physical Mona Lisa painting and how absurd it would be to feel like a person is making an intimate connection with that painting. Thinking that it's waiting for everyone else to leave to be with you, that they the painting does its makeup for you and how it doesn't really care that everyone else stares at it and knows that it can take the all the publicity. It's a one-to-one -one comparison on how seemingly irrational it is for fans to feel like they have a close intimate relationship with Porter and that any eye contact with him is a sign that he wants to be with them. Again, another narrative masterpiece. Is There Really No Happiness is the penultimate track 
back and a fan favorite from what I've seen online as Porter kind of returns to a more classically electronic sound for this one. It's a track that didn't immediately stick out to me at first, but surely has become another favorite of mine just off of pure unadulterated fun. And closing out the record is Everything To Me, which was totally a surprise going for a more somber all cards on the table kind of look. But in retrospect, the album wasn't going to end any other way. Here, Porter isn't beating around the bush or going for any kind of dense metaphors. It's clear, dry, and to the point. This life of Porter's is everything to him. He literally can't do anything else. The fans, his team, collaborators, his wife, this is the life that he wants to live. And he knows he shouldn't be feeding into those parasocial relationships. He knows he shouldn't be saying, I love you to the fans. He doesn't even know their names, but in the end, this is everything to him. In the end, this is the album that Porter Robinson wanted to make. This record perfectly encapsulates his feelings towards fame, the music industry, and most importantly, his fans. The double-edged sword that he can do whatever he wants and say whatever he wants, and he'll still have a dedicated fan base that needs him. A fan base that Porter actually can't live without himself either. This is without a doubt his most mature and narratively driven project to date. More than anything before, he is really trying to say something here, make a statement that is worth paying attention to. And at least in this era, he's not as relying on those flashy synth melodies and process vocals to kind of keep that core Porter sound alive. And he's proven on tracks like Cheerleader, Russian Roulette, and Is There Really No Happiness that he's more than just a pretty beat. And in the same breath, he's also proven that he has something worth saying and you need to pay attention to it. But in the end, I'm going to score Porter Robinson's smile a bow tied 9 out of 10. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Did you like this? Did you not? What did you think of this album holistically? What did you think of the score? Love to hear any and all thoughts in the comment section below. But other than that, I'm Dakota from Bowtie Media, and I'll see you guys in another video.